All right, folks, uh, the World Health Organization says the Omicron variant is spreading faster than the Delta variant and is it causing infections all across uh, the world, even folk, even those who are vaccinated who have previously recovered uh, from the virus. A lot of new mandates coming down. The mayor of Washington, D.C., uh, Muriel Bowser, has reinstated the indoor mask mandate, declaring a state of emergency as a result of a record number of new infections. Uh, also, uh, there are booster mandates in D.C. Uh, as well. Uh, folks, uh, it begins uh, tomorrow and it's going to go through January 31st, 2022. Now, here's where we stand uh, in terms of the overall numbers. 52 million reported cases of coronavirus. Folks, uh, since this uh, pandemic started, 827,343 people have passed away as a result of COVID-19. Now, according to the CDC, 61.4% of the population in the U.S., they are fully vaccinated against COVID. Now, remember, fully vaccinated means two shots. Now they're talking about adding the whole idea of the booster to now actually meaning uh, fully vaccinated. When you add that in, that number drops in a significant, a significant way. So what is it about Omicron that makes this thing so different? Joining us right now, Dr. Tyson Bell, a critical care and infectious disease specialist from the University of Virginia. Dr. Joseph L. Graves, Jr., Professor of Biological Sciences at North Carolina A&T. Glad to have uh, both of you uh, on today's show. Uh, so, Dr. Bell, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, this is um, the, what, what, what Omicron is doing is is, is shocking. Frankly, uh, a lot of folks who say they, they did not expect to see uh, it to be this contagious. Um, I posted this on the social media. Uh, I tested positive on Saturday after testing negative on Thursday. Uh, and when my symptoms started on Wednesday, uh, my doctors traced it back to essentially I probably was infected when I was on vacation in Hawaii. And so, uh, so I want to ask you that because, uh, again, a lot of people, we, we have all of these people who have, who have thrown all kinds of different stuff out. And so uh, let, let, let's sort of d deal with that. When, how, how are you tracking when you think someone may have uh, caught uh, COVID? Is it 10 days back from they first having symptoms? Exactly, exactly how do you all make that determination? Uh, well, good question, because uh, it is you can't really tell uh, what variant you may be infected with based on symptoms alone. And, right. Uh, the testing very important. Right. So uh, depending on if you have symptoms, that's your day zero, so to speak, or when they start. Or if you don't have symptoms, it starts from when your test was positive. Uh, so that's when that quarantine period starts. But uh, there's not really a, a, a symptom that would make one think that you have Omicron versus Delta. Frankly, they're both problems. So um, you know, it would start from either symptoms or your test. But isn't this also part of the problem? Because so perfect example, um, I had a scratchy throat uh, on um, Wednesday. We did we did the show on Wednesday from Atlanta mm -hmm. by 915. I said, man, give me something to drink. I said, my, my throat is scratchy. Uh, and then, you know, went back to our Airbnb, uh, woke up, uh, I had uh, I, I had some chills. I took a took a took a uh, home kit test. It was negative. Take the next test. Thirty six hours later, um, we, we have a staffer who actually diagnosed with bronchitis. Then, of course, uh, again, clear. But all of a sudden over the weekend, test positive for covid. You have some others who say they they think it's allergies or they think, think it's a cold, uh, and so it's it's sort of like it just kind of, it's just difficult folks to understand that if that all of a sudden if if you get a symptom, folks are saying, well, okay, what do I do? Do I immediately shut down? Do I immediately isolate? If I like like in my case, I had a symptom, but then I test negative. So what does the person do? Right. And, and uh, it, you it actually that's a goes to an important topic that there are some signs with some of the rapid tests that in the early right. days of Omicron, they may not be as good as picking up on infection. Uh, so the PCR or the laboratory tests, that's the one that um, you might have to go to a clinic or um, a doctor's office for. That's the one that's the most sensitive. That's the gold standard. So if you have symptoms um, and that rapid test is negative, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Um, we're done with it. I'll try to get that follow up test and see. And so I give you a perfect example. So I'm in Atlanta. I'm I was calling all around, could not find a location to get that PCR test uh, the, where we are right now in this country. Uh, we, we're seeing massive lines all across the country. We're seeing uh, home kits being sold out. Here we are 
uh, about to go into 2022. And frankly, we as a country still have not uh, been properly positioned to confront this pandemic. I mean, the fact that people are, I'm talking about, I'm seeing videos of people, 100, 200, 300 people in line, uh, cars backed up, uh, uh, you know, unable to, uh, to find locations. I mean, we are still behind the eight ball on this for some reason. I mean, there's a lot of uh, blame to go around. I, I would add in addition to the lack of rapid testing for everyone. Uh, we don't have the sequencing capability that other countries like in, in the UK have in order to even pick up on the Omicron variant. So uh, there's a lot of, of things that we need to be doing better. And, and uh, expanding rapid testing is definitely one of them. Um, doctor, uh, first of all, Dr. Gray, I want to bring you in. So when we had you on last year, one of the things that, that, that you made clear uh, you made clear was that, look, uh, you were going to have these variants. So what exactly is the Omicron variant? Um, and when I see this story to say, uh, the Wall Street Journal had a story right before I came on that 73% of all cases are now Omicron variant. First of all, how do you know that? And what makes this so different? The only way you would know that is by sequencing, um, the patients. And as Dr. Bell pointed out, in the United States, our sequencing efforts are really not up to snuff. Um, but what we do know at this point is that the Omicron variant is five times more transmissible than the Delta variant. And the Delta variant was very transmissible. And so, uh, you know, I hate to sound like a broken record because you and I have been having this conversation since the beginning of this pandemic. And I have consistently warned people that unless we drove down the number of infected individuals in the United States and worldwide, we would continue to see the evolution of new variants. And in the case of the Omicron variant, there are close to 400 um, mutations in the spike protein. And that's why um, it's, on one hand, more transmissible, but it comes at the expense of being less virulent. But that's not a reason to celebrate because it's still quite deadly, particularly for people who have pre-existing conditions. And also the Omicron variant has the capacity to continue to evolve such that it may retain its transmissibility, but also then gain the sort of virulence that you see in the Delta variant. And so, you know, we're back to square one on some really basic things, which are people in the United States need to begin to take COVID seriously. And if we don't, if we continue to be a culture of, of chicken little, you know, uh, actually there's a wrong analogy, I'm looking for uh, the ostrich with his head in the sand, um, this is going to continue and more and more people are going to die. It's really that simple. And, and okay, so, what you laid out there. And so if it is, if it is, you know, and first of all, why is it five times more uh, um, uh, contagious? Um, and, and, and with that, the case, and look, I mean, I've gotten text messages from people, um, other individuals who are prominent, who have actually tested positive, who have not gone public like I have. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, I've, I've had folks who said they've been at other events. And then next thing you know, these things have turned into super spreader events. Uh, and so for people out there, OK, what should we be doing, though? What exactly should we be doing? Well, it's easy to explain what we should be doing. And, and that's, again, people uh, in public health have been making these arguments for a, for a long time now. And that is we need to continue with mask mandates. Um, we shouldn't be gathering large groups of people, particularly with the Omicron variant now beginning to, to take over um, COVID transmission. We should not be gathering large groups of people in closed spaces. It's just it's, it's just the wrong idea. And once again, Roland, I hate to say it, but we're, we're, we're at a place where folks are thinking that their money is more important than people's lives. And so they don't want to face the hard truths of this is a very dangerous virus that will continue to evolve and may get even worse than it currently is, either with regard to its ability to transmit or its ability to make people really sick. So unless we are willing to say that we as a nation are going to take the political and moral 
um, courage it takes to put an end to this pandemic, we're going to keep going on this merry-go-round of things getting slightly better, and then everybody wants to open up, and then all of a sudden a new variant comes along, and then we're back in crisis mode. I mean, here in North Carolina, hospitals are already beginning to fill up with Omicron cases, and, and New York yesterday had over 21,000 cases. So it's this lack of a consistent policy, and it's a lack of this willingness to basically do what's right with regard to the health and well-being of people in the United States and around the world, which keeps us coming back to these conversations. Um, and again, I feel like I'm a broken record, but this is a record that's going to keep playing as long as people are unwilling to do what we need to do to stop this pandemic. So Dr. Tyson Bell, when we talk about, okay, how do we deal with it? Okay, so I just took my temperature. It's 97.9. Last week, it, uh, the, it spiked to a fever of about 103. Um, while in Atlanta, I took the uh, monoclonal antibody infusion. Okay, so we were talking about, if we're talking about um, healing from this, um, and, and I can tell you for folks, you, they can actually hear my voice. Uh, in many ways, this feels like when I had when I, when I have allergies, okay, stuffy nose, uh, some congestion, uh, don't have fatigue, don't have any of those things. And so, so here I am in my, in my luckily I got a studio in my basement. Uh, so I'm here, um, wife's upstairs. So I'm, I'm, I'm locked off. So what is this then period? So let's say, okay, people, people all of a sudden becoming positive. Uh, how, how long then should they simply be self isolating? Um, what's that process? Uh, and, um, how does one know you're getting better? What, uh, what, what then happens? Right. So the, the recommended isolation period is 10 days if you're positive. Uh, so that would either be 10 days from when your symptoms started or if you didn't if you did not have symptoms, 10 days from your positive tests. You don't have to be completely better, but you should have your fevers. Uh, they should be gone by that point. You should generally feel your energy starting to come back again. You might not be at 100 percent. But if you're on that road to recovery, if you're on the men and your fevers are gone without taking things like Tylenol or Advil or Motrin, um, then that's a that's a sure sign that you're you're kind of kicking it. Uh, the usual infectious periods in the first week usually, so that first uh, you know three to five days is when it starts, but then it, it goes down and um, the virus levels do uh, for most people, assuming you don't have any immunocompromising conditions or on medications like that. So I would say ten days for most people. Uh, and of course, watching out to make sure no shortness of breath, things along those lines. There's no turn uh, in terms of symptoms. Exactly. And then, and then while we're at it, let's just make one thing clear that uh, the vaccine, you know, I know you've received the vaccine. Uh, it's still working. I mean, it, the vaccines are never perfect. We never said that they were. They mostly are, are very good at keeping out of the hospital. I mean, it's not like you have antibodies that can run ahead and drop kick the virus before it interacts with you. Like it can still you can still get sick. But the point is, it activates your immune system much earlier than it would otherwise, and it decreases your chances of having a serious illness so that you can actually, you know, be positive, have COVID, and you can do, uh, do a show. Uh, and the, the thing, I, I, I think the point that, that Dr. Gray's, uh, you made is, is, is so on point that the real issue that we have in this country, it has been the schizophrenic. You've had all of these people who put pressure, okay, got to open up, got to open up, got to open up. And then they say, what's the big deal? We got to move on. It's destroying the economy. It's all of that. But then to your point, spike to so everybody's like, okay, my goodness, we got to like shut back down. And I, I just think we're, I, I personally think that we're still operating behind, behind the curve because we had the idiots of the Trump administration who screwed this up from the beginning. You did not have massive, massive testing across the country. The initial CDC test uh, was a joke. Okay. It was problems with that. And so all of this talk, remember people have the massive testing centers and in, in parking lots, stuff along those lines, that didn't happen. Now you have uh, people who have been saying that, that the, at, the, at the White House or the federal government should be sending uh, home kits to every American household. I don't understand why that's a controversial thing if you're trying to deal with an international pandemic. Because and then what do they say? Oh, the cost. I'm sitting there going, really? We just, we just literally just passed an $8 trillion defense bill. And you're telling me you're talking about the cost of sending uh, at home at, at home kits. And so not only that, uh, that those antibodies, it was difficult. It was difficult.
to find uh, in uh, when I was in Atlanta. I mean, we were calling all over. I was I was talking to Dr. Ebony Hilton, others here in Virginia saying, well, what if I get it when I come back to Virginia? She was like, ain't uh, not sure it's going to happen here as well. So here we we still as a nation, as our total infrastructure are ill prepared for what is going on. And it's as if uh, it's just like a patchwork every single day. Well, the again, you know, pr protecting people from COVID is a national defense issue, and it needs to be treated that way. And uh, again, I keep trying to bring home the fact that as viruses go, COVID is not as bad as what's out there. I mean, it's bad, but we have other viruses that can be next up in terms of their ability to become uh, pandemic. And their symptoms and their mortality is going to be much, much worse than COVID. So if we don't put in place the biomedical research and medical public health infrastructure to deal with these emerging pandemics, the next time around, things could be really worse. And, and, I, and I also want to drive home that right now, the vaccines are holding up against the Omicron variant. But as the virus continues to evolve, there is a real possibility that we're going to get a variant that escapes control by the vaccines, and then we really won't be prepared. So we're at a moment again, where we have the opportunity to try to get things under control, but it, it takes a concerted national effort. And folks that have been out publicly against vaccines need to sh basically change their tune. They need to start coming out and telling their supporters that they need to get vaccinated so that we can get this country back on track. Um, Dr. Bell, uh, on that point, um, it was interesting when I posted uh, on Saturday about testing positive. Uh, I had folks come on my come on my Instagram page, others saying, well, I, I hope you're not sitting here uh, mentioning that crap about vaccines. And I'm like, you damn right I am. I said, I, I'm like, I don't I, said, I don't give a damn what any of y'all critics think. I said, and I made it clear, every critic of the vaccine can literally kiss my ass. Because the bottom line is this here. There is no way in hell you're going to sit here and tell me that I'm not going to be trying to figure out every way to be fully protected. And that means the vaccine, that's the booster. I was going to get my booster December 28th. Uh, but, I, 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 but I still know someone who vaccinated and boosted uh, who also got COVID. And here's the problem, Dr. Bell. I think part of it still goes back to when we first started. So many people were under the assumption or were led to believe that the vaccine was the cure. And so I think there's this, there's this whole deal here in people's minds. Well, uh, well, you like I had I had some some idiot, some loud mouth, you know, who did a did did a video uh, on me. Oh, see, uh, he out there promoting vaccines and he got it. I'm like, well, yeah, fool. Like it's there. So explain. So I need both of you to please explain to these loudmouth nutcases exactly what the purpose of the vaccine is. And it was it is not a cure. There's no thing that's going to completely protect you from not getting it. It is designed to ensure, frankly, you're not going to be on a ventilator if you do get it. I think the easiest way to explain this is just to talk about what I've seen in my ICU. Uh, so if we look at last year and we were seeing the impact that it had, basically everyone, every age group, every demographic, disproportionately African-American, Latino, and underserved communities, as we talked about a lot on this show, but we rolled out vaccines to these communities. And now in my community, uh, Black and Latino communities are highly vaccinated. So who are we seeing now in the ICU? It's unvaccinated people. I'm not seeing any more 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 year old people who are fully vaccinated. It's all unvaccinated people. Uh, there are a few breakthrough infections and people who have these compromising conditions. Uh, but it is mostly unvaccinated people. So the face of the pandemic, at least for people who are severely ill, has changed in my ICU. Dr. Gra Dr. Graves? Yeah, I mean, I really can't add to that because the, the, the facts um, and the logic of this are so clear that I'm trying to find a way to, to speak to someone who doesn't utilize logic at all to understand the situation. It's simple. The vaccines are effective and safe. 
we are now seeing that people who have been vaccinated and people who have gotten boosters are less likely to catch COVID. And if they catch COVID, they're less likely to get very sick from it. We also have a complete opposite case of people who are unvaccinated. They're more likely to catch COVID and they're more likely to get very sick from it and they're more likely to die from it. It's as clear as I would say, the nose on my face. I, I don't I don't know what else to say. There, there are things called facts. I mean, it's these these anti-vaxxers are are equivalent to people who are arguing, well, that actually the earth is flat. That, that's the type of argument that they're making, that the earth is flat. No matter what evidence you provide for them, they will still adhere to the idea the earth is flat. Uh, I want you to reiterate that point again, Dr. Bell, where we what is happening now with our hospitals. Uh, I have I've seen numerous reports that the hospitals are filling up. And largely the people who are coming in are folks who are unvaccinated. Yeah. I mean, um, I have um, uh, just last week, um, we had a couple of young people that were in. So folks who are in their 30s, they have young children, they're unvaccinated. I ask everyone, if, assuming they're able to talk with me, I ask them, why didn't you get vaccinated? Um, a lot of times as people say, I didn't think I needed to. I, I'm healthy. I take vitamins and things like that, which is that's good to do. Uh, but this is a global pandemic that has killed millions of people. And the vaccines offer extremely good protection from uh, being severely ill. So it's the best decision you can make right now to go ahead and get vaccinated. Because like I said before, what I'm seeing in the ICU were unvaccinated people um, who are getting critically ill. All right, then, gentlemen, uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, this is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we made a point from the beginning to have our top black medical experts on talking about this stuff so people understand and they're getting real information. Uh, Dr. Tyson Bell, uh, University of Virginia, Dr. Uh, Joseph Graves at North Carolina A&T. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Go well, better. Hope we don't have to do this again. Uh, well, guess what? I, I think we're going to have to and we're going to keep hammering it. And for every person who keeps telling me uh, stop uh, talking about it and stop uh, promoting the vaccine, I'm going to tell them shut up. Cause it ain't gonna happen. video just one moment. to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Hey, Blake, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?